In October 2019, in a drama now known as Wagatha Christie, Colleen Rooney and Rebecca Vardy went head-to-head -head on Twitter following allegations of information being leaked to the press. Colleen made this accusation against Rebecca following a five-month investigation with the aid of just one simple tool, Instagram Stories. Colleen then shared a post which earned her the title of Modern Day Scooby-Doo for her investigative work. Twitter went into overdrive, birthing countless memes and even merch. Rebecca completely denied the claims and still does to this day as a court case ensues over a year later. Um, defamation and reputation is really the plaything of the rich. But who are these women? What is a wag? How did we get here? And why does anyone care? Who are you smiling at? It's all the drama, Mick! I just love it! Colleen McLaughlin is the nation's favourite tabloid sweetheart. At just 16, she hit the headlines as Wayne Rooney's girl. Five years on, she now writes her own fashion column, has launched a perfume, and is the face of Georgia Asda. She's gone from schoolgirl to style icon. But she's still your average girl next door. Thank you. Lean was born in Liverpool on the 3rd of April 1986. She left school with 10 GCSEs, including an A star for performing arts, showing that, even from an early age, she had a gift for creating drama. She met Wayne Rooney, footballing superstar and former England captain, when she was just 12 years old and they began dating when they were 16. The couple married in 2008 in a ceremony held in Portofino, Italy. The pictures were sold exclusively to OK Magazine. Colleen reigned supreme as the ultimate wag, writing columns for Closer as well as OK Magazine. She also released her autobiography, Welcome to My World, in 2007, charting Colleen's fairy tale transformation from liver partner schoolgirl to style icon and cover girl, sought after by fashion magazines the world over. She also branched out to TV, presenting her own series titled Colleen's Real Women, in which she looked for real women to front advertising campaigns instead of models, and led to her being labelled the nation's favourite girl next door. Rebecca was born in Norwich on the 17th of February 1982. During her childhood, she suffered sexual abuse and was eventually made homeless at only 15 following a breakdown in her relationship with her mum, who didn't believe her claims of abuse. She married her first husband, Mark Godden, in 2001, but the marriage fell apart after only six months when Rebecca cheated on Mark with none other than Peter Andre. No doubt you look so fine Whoa. Girl, I wanna make you mine Yeah, come on Just let me be Following this, she entered a six-year relationship with Oxford United player Luke Foster. However, the relationship with Luke came to a bitter end as he accused her of upgrading, claiming that their relationship overlapped with her meeting Jamie Vardy. Rebecca met Jamie when he hired her to plan his birthday party in 2015. They married the following year at Peckforton Castle with both Lewis Tomlinson and Tintree Strider in attendance. From early on in their relationship, Rebecca faced a lot of criticism in the media. Around that point, just before um, Jamie and I were due to get married, a lot of untrue things were being said about me, um, about my character, about the sort of person I was. As Rebecca became part of the WAGs, she grew closer to Colleen. The pair were seen cheering on their partners at the Euros in 2016 and enjoying nights out together along with their mutual friend, Dawn Ward. However, this friendship would come crashing down on the 9th of October 2019 when Colleen made the following post on all of her social media accounts. The post read, For a few years now, someone has been consistently informing the Sun newspaper of my private posts and stories. After a long time of trying to figure out who it could be, I came up with an idea. I blocked everyone from viewing my Instagram stories except one account. Over the past five months, I have posted a series of full stories to see if they made their way into the Sun newspaper. And you know what? They did. Now I know for certain which account slash individual it's come from. It's Rebecca Vardy's account. Is that you? Yeah. The fake stories she'd fabricated and shared on her Instagram included one about her basement apparently being flooded. It was a bit boring. Rebecca immediately denied all allegations with her own public statement. I wish you had called me if you thought this. I never speak to anyone about you. If you thought this was happening, you could have told me. Over the years, various people have had access to my Insta. I'm not being funny, but I don't need the money. I don't need 
need to manage. You think they f get a pay my mortgage? I've got money. You should have called me the first time this happened. Despite Rebecca flat out denying the allegations, Twitter overwhelmingly sided with Colleen and applauded her investigative genius, and soon requests were flooding in for Colleen to solve other mysteries. Fellow wag Daniel Lloyd added fuel to the fire after appearing on This Morning. I wasn't as shocked. You weren't surprised? No. Why? Because I've had run-ins with Rebecca before over similar things, so I think she thought maybe if she was feeding the press stories, she she would maybe get more headlines for herself. In response, Rebecca took to Twitter. You are so evil. Don't ever call me again. You are a low budget bitch. To which Danielle doubled down and replied. Let's not do that. So you're not ready for that. I'm not doing this right now. Okay. Hashtag not a girl's girl. Football fans soon got in on the action too and began chanting your wife is a grass for up to five minutes at a time during husband Jamie Vardy's matches. And as Halloween rolled around, Wagatha Christie's flooded the market. In the end, both women stuck to their guns. Colleen maintained Rebecca was to blame and Rebecca maintains her innocence. Maybe if you didn't sell stories on me, I wouldn't have been so upset this week. <laughs> The legal battle began in June 2020 when it was announced that Rebecca was suing Colleen for defamation as she alleges Colleen's false statements have damaged her reputation. Colleen's legal team answered that they felt the time and money could be put to better use. But that's what the story was always about. People with excessive amounts of money and too much time on their hands. It doesn't really matter who you believe, it's either someone who was already rich selling stories for fun and publicity or her fellow wealthy wag setting up her own one-woman investigative agency. In November 2019, it was revealed that Rebecca was successful in winning the initial argument. Her lawyers argued the incident has affected both her mental and physical health, leading to her being taken to hospital three times with anxiety attacks. I had people messaging me, um, saying nasty stuff. I mean, there's some, there's some comments here. Um, one in particular, you fat, ugly rat, I generally hope you oh, and your baby rot. Don't, don't read. Colleen's team have claimed her post outlined reasonable grounds she had to suspect Rebecca or her team of breaching her trust. However, in the end, the law agreed that the post directly pointed the finger at Rebecca and Colleen was ordered to pay just under £23,000 in costs for the November hearing. How you doing? Don't ask me how I'm doing. Where's my money? The money, I do not owe anything. Oh, please. Court papers also revealed that Rebecca had admitted to getting cash from photographers when they sold pictures of her or her family. They also showed that Colleen had claimed Rebecca worked with a number of agencies to bolster her public persona and had apparently insisted that the wags of England's 2018 World Cup team posed for a team picture outside of a restaurant in St. Petersburg. Following this initial ruling in Rebecca's favour, both parties agreed to stay in proceedings until February 2021. In January 2021, reports emerged that a mediation session would take place via Zoom. However, following the session taking place in February, it soon became clear that a reconciliation between the two was not a possibility and a full trial is due to take place. Following this, Rebecca took to posting indirects on Instagram. Meanwhile, it's alleged that Colleen simply wants Rebecca to apologise as she's had enough of the court case. It's also said that Rebecca is looking for an apology, but it seems that neither of them will get one as they're both sticking to their guns. I will 100% not say those words. With the trial set to take place sometime before April 2022, the end is somewhat in sight. By the time it gets to trial, the matter will probably be over two years old and it's hard to believe the issue has gone on for so long. It's also clear that the image of the public held of each of these women prior to the Wagatha Christie scandal played a huge role into how things have unfolded. But I believe, I generally believe that Colleen would not put this statement out unless she had evidence because she could get done for Deflammatory, you know, Rebecca's having a baby, she's like heavily pregnant. You, there's no way, there must be truth in it. There's got to be. Colleen was dubbed the nation's favourite girl next door and had been in public eye for a longer time than Rebecca and had cultivated a persona which a lot of people knew and trusted. Rebecca, on the other hand, had been vilified from day one and in the course of public opinion, the media plays a massive role in deciding how the public perceives different people. Perhaps that's why so many people were ready to believe Colleen and condemn Rebecca. We are a nation of curtain twitchers. Nick, we're looking over, we want gossip. And sometimes you don't care if that gossip's true, it's just 
we are a nation looking for stories and people like this are telling us a really interesting piece of soap opera.